Hello everyone. Welcome to the next in a series of webinars about reaction analysis from Mettler Toledo AutoChem. Today's webinar topic is Recent Advances in Organic Chemistry in Academia Using Real-Time in situ FTIR. First, I will give a brief introduction to our technology, the value of real-time in situ IR monitoring for research, and then we'll give a brief introduction on the method of measurement. I'll then review two publications from academia in 2008 where React IR was used to support the research effort. The first is from the Lippard Research Group at MIT. The second is from the Casey Research Group at the University of Wisconsin. While reviewing the publications, I will do my best to capture the essence of the research and the role that in situ monitoring played in supporting the research. For full details, please refer to the original article. React IR is a real-time in situ reaction analysis system. It provides the capability to monitor reactions under actual reaction conditions without having to interfere with the chemistry to get analytical information. This means that any reactions that have components that are sensitive to oxygen, water, or to changes in temperature can be monitored effectively, eliminating any associated problems with taking and working up samples for offline analysis. Spectra are collected automatically as a function of time, typically every one or two minutes. However, spectra can be collected as fast as every second. This results in an extremely comprehensive set of concentration information for all key components, which allows not only for the accurate reaction initiation and endpoint determination, but also gives the capability to detect transient reactive intermediate species. In academia, this information is commonly used to understand reaction kinetics and to elucidate mechanism and pathway. I will cover the method of measurement briefly. For those that want more detail, please visit the reaction analysis page on mt.com. The link will be provided at the end of this presentation. The technique that we use in our sampling technology is attenuated total reflectance, commonly referred to simply as ATR. ATR works on the principle of Snell's law, where each reflection is actually an interrogation point of the sample matrix. At each interrogation point, the infrared radiation penetrates into the reaction matrix only about 2 micrometers. Therefore, the path length is equal to the depth of penetration times the number of reflections. Since the infrared radiation only penetrates into the matrix such a short distance, bubbles and solids do not affect the measurement. In most cases, the, si the system will not be able to observe the solids in the sample matrix. This is quite different from transmission-based techniques, where bubbles and particulates will cause interferences. In essence, the REACT IR is sampling the liquid phase of the reaction mixture. With REACT IR data, we will plot in absorbance and not transmittance. Why? Absorbance is proportional to concentration via Beer's law, although A, absorptivity, and B, path length, are functions of a few variables, we generally assume them to be constant. When a peak absorbance is plotted versus time, we are looking at a concentration versus time plot. With the specificity of the min infrared, a peak absorbance is associated with a particular functional group and we can therefore trend how the concentration of multiple species change with time in the reaction mixture. The enabling technology of the comp probe design is a fundamental factor in the success of the REACT IR. The comp probe was introduced in 1994 and has been used for over 15 years now with thousands of probes in daily use at scientific institutions around the globe. The design shown to the right has a zinc selenide focusing and support element that focuses the infrared energy into the ATR sensor. The zinc selenide element does not come in contact with the chemistry as it is inside the metal housing of the probe. The only wetted materials are the standard alloy C276 metal housing, a gold seal, and the ATR sensor. The most universal and widely used ATR material is diamond. It is extremely hard and chemically resistant. 
However, diamond does absorb in the mid-infrared between 2,250 and 1,950 reciprocal centimeters. If you need to monitor in that region for components such as metal carbonyls, isocyanates, or nitriles, then we have a sensor material of silicon and cubic zirconia available as well. In addition to the gold seal, a Teflon seal is also available, and many different types of probe housing materials can be used alternately to alloy C276, including among others tantalum, titanium, or other alloys. The temperature and pressure specifications for the comp probes are dependent on the specific probe type, but the full temperature range is minus 80 to 400 degrees C, and the pressure range is vacuum to 300 bar. The comp probe design is available in four diameters of 6.3 millimeter, 9.5 millimeter, 16 millimeter, and 25 millimeter, all coming in various lengths. The development of the latest generation of React IRs has been focused on reducing the instrument size and software complexity and developing a range of fiber optic based flexible probe technologies. The React IR IC10, pictured here, was specifically developed to appeal to the organic chemist and has become a general purpose research tool in the lab. The system has a very small footprint, about the size of a shoebox. Implementation is not much more difficult than inserting a ther thermocouple into a flask. Another major advancement for the organic chemist is ICIR software. The software is wizard based which leads a person through the setup of an experiment. Here you can also see a screenshot of the ICIR software. All the windows are linked so that any changes made in one window are reflected in all the other windows. ICIR's real-time features allow you to not only automate collection of spectra as a function of time, but to compare any spectra from the reaction file and to trend any functional groups. In fact, any data treatment can be invoked in real time, including solvent subtraction, advanced math functions, and quantitative prediction, among others. It is important to remember that this is mid-infrared spectroscopy so that any functional group changes that are active in the mid-infrared can be monitored for concentration changes in real time. Our first literature review comes from the Lippard Research Group at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Cambridge, Massachusetts. It was published in October of 2008 in the Journal of American Chemical Society. Nitric oxide is known to play a variety of important roles in biological chemistry which involves transition metal centers in the active sites of proteins. Nitric oxide is also believed to be involved in the disassembly of iron sulfur proteins leading to the formation of dinitrosyl iron complexes known as DNICs. The possibility that DNICs can act as carriers for nitric oxide in vivo has led to renewed interest in these compounds, with several groups showing that DNICs have the ability to transfer nitric oxide to other metal centers. Even though there is an increase in the body of literature showing the reaction of NO with iron sulfur cluster proteins, there is little reported on the reactivity of nitric oxide with synthetic cluster analogs. The mechanism of DNIC formation, the formation of N intermediates and the reaction pathway still has not been elucidated. No systematic study of the reaction of stoichiometric and controlled quantities of nitric oxide with iron sulfur complexes has appeared in the literature. This information is needed in order to understand the chemistry in biological systems. The use of trital S nitrosothiol as an organic soluble stoichiometric reagent for NO was also highlighted. The Lippard group initiated a study of the reaction pathways of synthetic iron sulfur complexes with nitric oxide. They began with looking at the reaction of NO with homoleptic iron sulfur complexes, which resulted in the first structurally and spectroscopically characterized mononitrosyl iron complexes, MNICs, as well as their ana analogous DNICs. They also investigated the reaction of several synthetic clusters with NO and S nitrosothiols. They reported the results of a systematic study that demonstrated the formation of DNICs 
as the predominant iron-containing products of nitrosylation in all cases, and that the ratio of thiolate to iron is critical in trapping and stabilizing these species. It is important to note that typically REACT-IR is a complementary analytical tool, which is the case here. In addition to in-situ measurements using REACT-IR, offline analysis of solid samples pressed into KBR pellets was done using a traditional benchtop FTIR, UV vis measurements were made in capped quartz cells, and EPR spectroscopy was also used. Regarding the use of REACT-IR, a highly sensitive 30 reflection silicon sensor composition probe known as SICOMP was used as the probe technology. Note that the sample concentrations are relatively low, although I have seen more sensitive measurements reported in the literature using the 30 reflection SICOMP probe. Reactions of both the 2-iron, two 2-sulfur, two and 4-iron, four 4-sulfur four synthetic clusters were reacted similarly. Verification of DNIC as the sole iron-containing product was verified by IR, UV-Vis, and EPR spectroscopy. They also found that in all reactions employing gaseous nitric oxide, that identical results were obtained using trital-S nitrosothiol in place of the gaseous NO and that its use allowed them to deliver a spo stoichiometric quantity of nitric oxide equivalents. This reactivity is important because nitrosothiols are believed to be car carriers of NO in living systems. REACT-IR was chosen for in situ monitoring of the reactivity of the 4-iron four 4-sulfur four synthetic cluster. Spectra were acquired every 30 seconds after the introduction of gaseous NO into the headspace of the reaction flask for a total of two hours. Introduction of one mole equivalent resulted in an immediate color change and the appearance of two broad bands at 1745 and 1708 wave numbers plus a small peak at 1800 wave numbers. These bands grew in intensity for about 20 minutes after the addition of NO. These values match the IR spectrum of the tetraphenyl arsonium salt of the iron sulfide nitrosyl cluster known as Rusin's black salt, or RBS. To determine whether or not other complexes formed during this process, additional equivalents of NO were added. REACT-IR showed that no other complexes formed up to the addition of eight equivalents of nitric oxide. Reactions of gaseous NO and trital S nitrosothiol with synthetic 2-iron, two 2-sulfur, two and 4-iron, four 4-sulfur four clusters afford DNIC, or Rusin's black salt, as the nitrosylated iron products. The nature of the thiolate ligand and the ratio of thiolate to iron appear to be critical in determining which products were formed. As mentioned earlier, a variety of spectroscopic techniques were used to support this research. REACT-IR was used as an in-situ monitoring tool to show that each stoichiometric addition of NO resulted in the formation of only RBS and no other nitrosal species. The second literature review comes from the research of Chuck Casey at the University of Wisconsin in Madison, Wisconsin. I chose to review this article because it is an excellent example of the role that in-situ mid-infrared analysis can play in kinetic studies. The catalytic hydrogenation of benzaldehyde and acetophenone with the Schwo hydrogenation catalysts were monitored by in situ infrared spectroscopy in both toluene and THF. The disappearance of organic carbonyl compound and the concentrations of the ruthenium species present throughout the hydrogenation reaction were observed. The dependence of the hydrogenation rate on substrate, hydrogen pressure, total ruthenium concentration and solvent were measured. In toluene, bridging diruthenium hydride 1 was the only observable ruthenium species until nearly all the substrate was consumed. In THF, both 1 and some monoruthenium hydride 2 were observed during the course of the hydrogenation. A full kinetic model of the hydrogenation based on rate constants for individual steps in the catalyst was developed. The kinetic model simulates the rate of carbonyl compound hydrogenation and of the amounts of ruthenium species 1 and 2 present during hydrogenations. As reported in this article, 
ligand metal bifunctional hydrogenation catalysis is dramatically changing the face of reduction chemistry. These transition metal catalysts contain electronically coupled hydritic and acidic hydrogens that are transferred to polar unsaturated species under mild conditions. The first of such catalysts, Schwo's catalyst, was developed in the mid-1980s. More recently, Noyori has developed a series of chiral catalysts that display extraordinary activity and enantioselectivity in the hydrogenation of a diverse range of ketones. The Casey group has been working for several years to elucidate the mechanism of hydrogenations catalyzed by the Schwo catalyst. Many of their studies have involved NMR measurements of complexes related to catalysts, and for those studies they used a 3,4 ditolyl variant of the Schwo catalyst that has signature tolyl methyl NMR resonances. In this article, reported is the in situ infrared spectroscopic monitoring of the catalytic hydrogenation of benzaldehyde and acetophenone. The disappearance of organic carbonyl and the concentrations of the ruthenium species present were followed throughout the hydrogenation reaction. The rate dependence on substrate, hydrogen pressure, total ruthenium concentration, and solvent was measured. The remarkable agreement found between the experimental observations and the operating catalyst system and those from kinetic model simulations provide deeper insight into the mechanism of catalysis and additional support for the basic outline of the mechanism shown in Scheme 1 on the previous slide. The hydrogenation of benzaldehyde under 35 atmospheres of hydrogen at 60 degrees C in toluene was monitored by REACT IR. The conversion of benzaldehyde was monitored by following the disappearance of its infrared carbonyl band at 1,709 wave numbers. Simultaneously, the concentrations of the ruthenium species present were monitored by following the metal carbonyl infrared bands of bridging diruthenium hydride 1 at 2036, 2004, and 1997 wave numbers, and ruthenium hydride 2 at 2018 and 1957 wave numbers. Quantitative measurement of 1 was made using the isolated 2000. 36 wave number band, and 2 was assumed to be the remaining material. The disappearance of benzaldehyde did not follow a simple rate law. At low conversion, benzaldehyde conversion occurred at a nearly constant rate, but at higher conversion, the rate of hydrogenation slowed. A plot of the natural log of benzaldehyde concentration versus time showed pronounced downward curvature. The researchers recognized that any mechanistic model for the hydrogenation of benzaldehyde, catalyzed by 1 and 2, faces the formidable challenge of explaining the relative concentrations of ruthenium species present during catalysis and the complex kinetics of hydrogenation, which have less than first-order dependence on aldehyde, total ruthenium, and hydrogen pressure. Previously, they had determined the rates and activation parameters for the stoichiometric reduction of benzaldehyde by 2 and for the loss of hydrogen from 2. The rate of dissociation of bridging diruthenium hydride 1 in toluene was determined by monitoring the reaction of 1 with excess triphenylphosphine by proton NMR spectroscopy. The equilibrium of bridging diruthenium hydride 1 and hydrogen with monoruthenium hydride 2 in the presence of benzyl alcohol was measured at 60 degrees in toluene by REACT IR. The equilibrium of bridging diruthenium hydride 1 and hydrogen with monoruthenium hydride 2 in the presence of benzyl alcohol was measured at 60 degrees in toluene by REACT IR to closely match the conditions of catalytic hydrogenation as shown in the table above. A solution of bridging diruthenium hydride 1 and 0.95 molar benzyl alcohol in toluene was heated at 60 degrees under 35 atmospheres of hydrogen. The approach to equilibrium was monitored by observing the IR bands of 1 and 2 at 2035 and 2015 centimeters reciprocal centimeters respectively. The equilibrium concentrations of 1 at 1.8 millimolar 
and 2 at 21.3 millimolar and hydrogen at 121 millimolar were used to determine an equilibrium constant of 1.9. With estimates of all the needed rate constants in hand, as it's shown in Table 2, the researchers modeled the kinetics of the catalytic hydrogenation of benzaldehyde at 0.97 molar with 1 and 2, with the concentration of 1 at 3.8 millimolar, and toluene at 60 degrees, according to the mechanism shown in Scheme, scheme 1 using KinTechSim modeling software. The first thing to notice is the similarity of the shape of the curves for benzaldehyde disappearance to the measured data from React IR. The kinetic simulation correctly mirrors the concentrations of the ruthenium species present during hydrogenation of benzaldehyde. The hydrogenation of acetophenone under 35 atmospheres of hydrogen and toluene at 60 degrees was monitored by React IR. The conversion of acetophenone was monitored by following the disappearance of the carbonyl band at 1690 wave numbers as shown in figure 5. Simultaneously 1 and 2 were followed as well. Quantitative measurement of 1 was made using the isolated 2036 wave number band and 2 was assumed to be the remaining material. Low concentration of 2 were seen during acetophenone hydrogenation and significant amounts of 2 were seen only after most of the acetophenone had been hydrogenated. To gain an understanding of how the choice of solvent affects hydrogenations with 1 and 2, the researchers were also examined and modeled the hydrogenation of benzaldehyde and acetophenone in tetrahydrofuran. The hydrogenation of benzaldehyde under 35 atmospheres of hydrogen in THF at 60 degrees was also monitored by REACT IR. The conversion of benzaldehyde was monitored by following the disappearance of the carbonyl band at 1,706 wave numbers, as shown in Figure 7. Simultaneously, 1 and 2 were also followed. Quantitative measurement 1 was again made using the isolated band at 2,036 wave numbers. In contrast to the observations in toluene, substantial and growing concentrations of 2 were seen throughout the hydrogenation of benzaldehyde in THF. In summary, remarkably good agreement was found between experimental hydrogenation rates and simulated rates calculated using the reactions in Scheme 1 and rate constants extrapolated to 60 degrees estimated from kinetic and equilibrium measurements made at much lower or much higher temperatures. This close agreement between experimental and simulated hydrogenations provides increased confidence in the fundamental soundness of the kinetic model. Scheme 1 provides an excellent quantitative and now quantitative picture of the kinetics of hydrogenation under a wide range of conditions. The kinetic model provides a deeper understanding of why there are large differences in rates of stoichiometric reduction of carbon new compounds by 2, but only small differences in hydrogenation rates. The Schwo catalyst system 1 and 2 often makes inefficient use of ruthenium because so much of the ruthenium is present as the dormant species 1 and so little is present as the active reducing agent 2. To develop new, more active catalyst systems with structures that interfere with formation of unreactive MHM systems but maintain high reactive of the MH species are needed. As a final note, I want to point out that React IR was not only able to differentiate between all of the key reactive species, but proved to be sensitive even with ruthenium catalyst species at concentrations between 3 and 4 millimolar. In summary, React IR is a versatile tool which enables researchers in academia and industry to elucidate reaction mechanism and pathways. As it is in an in situ technique, it is invaluable for the detection of transient reactive intermediate species and as shown by the Lippert group, a powerful tool for studying chemistry sensitive to oxygen, water vapor, and even light. As you saw from the work of the Casey Research Group, the REACT IR is invaluable for providing empirical experimental data for performing kinetics analysis. 
Lastly, one of the most common uses for React IR is determining reaction progression. It is quite often the case that simple things like knowing when a reaction initiates and ends are the most difficult to know. Real-time in situ infrared provides a very simple but elegant way to get the answers to these tough questions.